This video was sponsored by Skillshare. I can't believe I'm actually making this video, but in this video I'm going to show you how you can make your highlights exactly the way I make mine. A very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benny, Benjamin, Benji, whatever you want to call me, and today I am finally doing that thing that you guys have asked me like at least 10,000 times. How do I create my highlights? I guess I'll just have to make this video for once. This is definitely not gonna be a regular thing, I hate making tutorials, but since I recently got 200k I felt like I owed you something. Therefore I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing and supporting me because I still can't really believe this, any of this. It's it's crazy, it's insane. But before we start let me tell you something exciting because as you just saw this video was sponsored by Skillshare. Now what is Skillshare? Let me explain. If you are a creative person and you like to learn and explore new things there is no way you won't like Skillshare for it's the perfect place for online learning in topics like illustration, design, photography, video and also guess what? Photoshop. Especially in the strange current time we're in, Skillshare may help you to regain your productivity and bring back a feeling of accomplishment. The creativity on Skillshare is beyond incredible and I personally got super excited when I first took a look at the classes they have to offer. Of course there's lots of classes about Photoshop too but some are really surprising. For example pixel art in Photoshop is something that never came to mind before. There's also a few about mock-ups, poster design, digital painting and of course beginners and advanced classes to all of Photoshop in one. Now one specific class really blew me away personally because I've been a big fan of photographer Brandon Wolfel and he himself has a class about his photography. It's called Instagram worthy photography shoot edit and share with Brandon Wolfel and in it he shows all kinds of techniques, his personal processes and even how he edits his photos. And since Skillshare is purely focusing on learning I didn't get any annoying ads and the quality is great. All that to make sure you can focus on the things you need. And guys, it is only $10 a month with an annual subscription. That is super affordable. Plus the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I'm convinced Skillshare will be a perfect fit for most of you guys so go check it out. Awesome. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded in your boy Captain Ryan because this is exactly what we're gonna use to make our highlights. So this uh, looks cool but there are no highlights at all so let's add highlights. First thing you want to do is add your first adjustment layer right here adjustments. Usually I go for a hue and saturation because then you actually have color options so since this is pretty yellow orange red I'm gonna use hue and saturation. We are gonna call this highlight one. I'm gonna hold alt and click in between the two layers or click this button right here which clips it to the thing. That means it only affects that object and nothing below it. So then what you will do is check this checkbox right here which says colorize because if you don't you only change the well you can exactly see what happens when you don't. First you have to sort of match the color with the color of your explosion or other light source. In my case the explosion. So I'm gonna try to do that. I think about this is it for me. So then what you do is increase the saturation all the way to 100 and then increase the lightness. You can always change that later. So for now this is fine. And then invert this layer mask by hitting Ctrl I which is invert. And then it's, it's disappeared again. So then what you do is you grab Grab your brush, just a regular brush, round, soft, not too big, just sort of like this. And we're gonna start right here at the helmet. Make sure your mask is selected, make sure brush color is black and white. If it's not, you can click on this really small button right here that makes it black and white. You can switch between these colors with X on your keyboard super handy. Also make sure opacity and flow is maxed out by the way. So when you have white selected as you can see it shows and with black it hides. Easy as that. So we're gonna start right here at the top of his helmet. So I'm just gonna softly paint just like that. I'm just using my mouse, no pen tablets or anything. Just creating this nice subtle highlight. With this technique you go all over the edge and the light source is here. So you cannot start doing this. Makes no sense, there's, there's no light right there. Make sure to do it only on the right sides. And if you don't know where that is, the only tip I can give you is when you walk outside or anything, 
just look around you, look how the light works, how it looks, how does it react to the environment, all that kind of stuff, and soon you'll just see where it goes and where it doesn't. What I do is most of the time I just paint too much, then press X and remove the stuff I don't want. This way I can create very soft edges at the inside and hard at the outside, as you can see, just like that. And don't expect this to go quick, it's, it takes, takes a lot of precision, a lot of time. Also keep in mind the explosion is behind him, so areas like this cannot be lit, it's really just the edges at this point. The brush is still the same as it was before, just softness on zero. Now the hardness is all the way up to 100% and with that I can simply just remove the areas I don't want. Now what you might see is that the color or lightness or whatever is not exactly right so for that you can simply go back into your settings of the highlight adjustment layer and just change the values maybe color maybe a bit lighter and as you can see that is looking pretty cool this was it before this is after let's go to my second example so here is our second example let's see what we got we have two explosions this time and two glows obviously so that is what we have to deal with so let's uh, uh, start the same way as we did before a hue and saturation adjustment layer clip it with the subject hit colorize try to match the color as good as you can increase the lightness but now there's one additional step because sometimes blend if can really help to make your image even cooler and better when you double click on your hue and saturation layer this dialog box pops up and right here you have blend if we want to focus on the underlying layer which is the trooper and not the layer itself what we want is the absolute darkest areas of this trooper. We don't we don't want to see it there. So first I hit alt and click on this slider that splits it as you can see. Then when I move the right slider to the right, you can see it sort of creates a path so you know where to put your highlights, but also it makes it a lot more realistic. So maybe like then hit okay and invert the mask with Ctrl I. Grab your brush again. We are gonna do the exact same thing as before. Make sure the flow and opacity is all the way to 100 and start painting from the helmet all the way down. Just like that. Sometimes you wanna go for a little bigger area like this. One of the most important things about all of this is that you don't only want to focus on the actual edges because as you can see a lot of what I'm doing is actually inside of the outline which is and that is that is very important because a lot of people I see just only limit themselves to the actual edge right here just all around but that is not actually how highlights work they're not just on the actual edge of the image they're on the edges of every part on the image right now I am painting an area which is no near the edge and yet it should be lit by that explosion because it is in the range. I often paint and then erase again so the color is softer and not all that intense. Here's a good example again, I paint it then I erase it again with a big soft brush.
And there you go, I think that is pretty much it for the green area. Now, as you can see, that does add a lot. And now you might wonder why the blend if? Does it really make a difference? Well, let's see if it does. When you turn it off, it looks like this. And especially here, you can really see improvement with or without. This is with and then this is without. It seems a bit more organic when you have it on. It's there, but it doesn't really seem integrated. So for that, you can copy your highlight right there, delete the mask and bring the lightness back to zero. As you can see now the entire thing becomes green. Then you add a negative layer mask, which you can do by holding Alt and clicking on the mask button. And then you can take a very large soft brush and sort of just all around the area that has that lighting, just add some, some green. Then once you did that, you can decrease the saturation, probably to 50 or something. And as you can see, that gives a bit more color and, you know, life to that side of the trooper. Then the exact same thing for the orange one right here. We all know how it goes by now. Let's see, copy the highlight, make sure it's clipped, then delete the mask so we can see what we're doing and change the color to the right color, right like that, maybe a bit brighter. Then I'm gonna add a negative layer mask and I'm gonna start painting again all over the right edges. So there you go, that is it for the highlight, then the same as before, copy the layer, delete the layer mask, bring the lightness back to zero, add a new negative layer mask and just softly paint around the edges, decrease the saturation a bit. Well there you go, that is pretty much it for this specific image I would say. Then I added some filters and, and effects and stuff and now it actually looks pretty cool so I might actually post this on my Instagram. Maybe, I'll see. But uh, yeah, so I hope that it cleared something up for you. If it didn't, I'm sorry. If it did, great. I hope you learned something today. And uh, yeah. No favorite Instagram post today because this is a tutorial and nobody really cares about it right now. So I guess then this is the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and a comment. And if you enjoy my overall content, feel very, very free to subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Then I hope I will see you in my next video.